assalamu alaikum we are talking about nucleic acid synthesis inhibitors we have already discussed folic acid synthesis inhibitors now it's time to see direct inhibitors of nucleic acid that are quinolones quinolones can be divided into narrow spectrum and wide spectrum quinolones like cephalosporins quinolones are classified by their generation based on their antimicrobial spectrum of activity first generation quinolones are included in narrow spectrum first generation quinolones like we have norfloxacin this norfloxacin is active against common pathogens that cause utis next we have second and third generation quinolones that are included into wide spectrum the second generation quinolone that contains ciprofloxacin and ofloxacin cipro and ofloxacin they have greater activity against gram positive Gr uh, sorry gram negative bacteria and they are also active against gonococcus they are also active against many gram positive cocci like we have mycobacteria and agents of atypical pneumonia like m pneumonia and chlamydophila pneumonia next we have third generation fluoroquinolone which consist on levofloxacin gemifloxacin and moxifloxacin they are slightly less active than ciprofloxacin and ofloxacin against gram negative bacteria but they have greater activity than gram positive bacteria as compared to second generation in other words we can say that for gram negative bacteria second generation is preferred and for gram positive bacteria gram positive cocci third generation is preferred third generation is active against strep pneumonia as i told you they are very active against gram positive cocci including strep pneumonia some strains of enterococci and mersa third generation drugs are commonly referred as respiratory fluoroquinolones in some books gemifloxacin and ofloxacin are considered in fourth generation fluoroquinolones this gemifloxacin and ofloxacin they are the broadest spectrum fluoroquinolone they uh, have enhanced activity against anaerobes did you remember one thing that anaerobes amino glycosides are not active against anaerobes because amino glycosides need oxygen okay back to our topic quinolones let's see the mechanism of action quinolones interfere with dna synthesis by inhibiting two enzyme topoisomerase 2 and topoisomerase 4 the topo isomerase 2 is also known as dna dyrase for normal transcription and duplication for normal transcription and duplication super cold dna has to relax 
which is catalyzed by dna gyrase and during during cell division during cell division replicated chromosomes are separated and this separation takes place with the help of topo isobrase 4 so quinolones are interfering with dna synthesis by inhibiting topo isomerase 2 dna gyrase specifically in gram positive and topo isomerase 4 specifically in gram negative organism let's see the pharmacokinetics quinolones have good oral bioavailability and they penetrates in most body tissues but like tetracyclines chelators like iron and calcium they can decrease the absorption of quinolones like most of the drugs elimination is through kidney via active tubular secretion which can be blocked by probenecid so it means dose reduction is usually needed in renal dysfunction except for moxifloxacin because moxifloxacin is eliminated by hepatic metabolism and and by biliary excretion remember one more thing use of moxifloxacin in UTIs is not recommended. Half lives of fluoroquinolones are usually in range of three to eight hours. Now let's see the clinical uses of quinolones. Quinolones are effective in treatment of infections, infections of urogenital and GIT tract. that are caused by gram negative organisms including gonococci e coli klebsiella pneumoniae c jejuni enterobacter pseudomonas aeruginosa salmonella and shigella species levofloxacin is used to treat drug resistant pneumonia ofloxacin is active against c trachomatis a seven day course of treatment is required ciprofloxacin and ofloxacin they both are are used as an alternative to ceftriaxone and cefixime a single dose of cipro and ofloxacin is used and as an alternative to treat gonorrhea and about jemi and moxifloxacin as i told you before they both have widest spectrum which includes both gram positive gram negative atypical atypical pneumonia and some anaerobes fluoroquinolones have also been used in meningococcal carrier state in the treatment of tb and they are also used in prophylactic management of neutropenic patients let's see the side effects of quinolones which includes tendinitis tendon rupture nerve damage like peripheral neuropathy so quinolones also cause phototoxicity and rashes i have heard a mnemonic about the drugs that cause phototoxicity it is like for the drugs that cause phototoxicity
mnemonic was photos pho means fluoroquinolones t defines tetracyclines and s sulfonamide these drugs causes these drugs cause phototoxicity quinolones also causes cns effects that include insomnia dizziness and headache quinolones like amino glycoside sulfonamide and tetracycline quinolones are also contraindicated in pregnancy and in children because they cause inhibition of chondrogenesis in children as i just said the drugs that are contraindicated in pregnancy are amino glycosides quinolone sulfonamide and tetracycline so there are certain drugs that are safe to use in pregnancy these include pens penicillins cephalosporin and macrolide use these drugs to treat infections during pregnancy thank you alafis